All right, so we're gonna work a problem today where we're looking at an air conditioning process involving two different processes. So we've got atmospheric air, moist air flowing through this ductwork, and the first section of ductwork, we have a cooling process, and then we've got a heating process in the second, in the second part. Um, so, and I wanna find Q.1 and Q.2, so the heat transfer for both of those processes. Um, and I'm gonna assume that specific, or that um, the process takes place at steady state, changes in kinetic and potential energy are negligible, and I guess that's about it. Um, and then of course, since I've got a cooling process, I do need to verify whether or not that's a, a condensation problem. So I'm going to divide it up into two parts. I'm going to look at the cooling section, which may be a simple cooling process, or it may be a dehumidification process. I got to figure out which one of those it is. And then I've got a simple heating process. Um, so. First things first, let's figure out if we have condensation and that way I know whether I've got a simple cooling process or dehumidification process. So what that means is I'm gonna to have to calculate what T, uh, what the dew point temperature is um, to see if T2 is less than that dew point temperature. So T, the dew point temperature at the partial pressure of the water vapor at state one is just T sat at PV1. So I can calculate what PV1 is based off of the relative humidity um, and I've got, I've got T1, so I can look up the saturation pressure, and I've got my relative humidity, so I can do the calculation to get that PV at state one. Then I can go back to my saturated water tables and figure out what the saturation pressure, or the saturation temperature is at PV1, at 0 0.034038 bar, and that's 26.2 degrees Celsius. Okay, so, that answers the question. Of course, T2 is 15 degrees Celsius, and that's less than 26.2, so I've cooled below the dew point temperature. I do have condensation. Um, now, there is another way that you can do this without, uh, a little bit easier way, and that's by using the psychrometric charts. And you can do that because, well, you've got, um, your pressure is at one ATM. So, let's look at my psychrometric chart, and I'm gonna follow along on a TV diagram, the behavior of the water within that atmospheric air. So I'm starting out at state one, I'm at 35 degrees Celsius and a relative humidity of 60%. And if in that first section, I'm cooling things down, if it were a simple cooling process, I would be able to follow along a line of constant um, specific humidity. So my humidity ratio would not change. The ratio of water to dry air would not change. However, you'll notice that I've only cooled down to 26 degrees, which is roughly what I calculated for my dew point temperature. So there's no way for me to cool that air all the way down to, um, what was it, 15 degrees Celsius without condensing. So I have to cool along that line of uh, that saturated vapor line, which also corresponds to a relative humidity of 100%. Um, so that puts me all the way down there at state two. And then while I'm here, I might as well see what's going on at state three. So this, this section, that's the second section, it was a heating process. So it's a simple heating process, which means that the humidity ratio or the specific humidity doesn't change. And so I increase in temperature, but I don't increase or decrease in the humidity ratio. So there I am all the way heated up from 15 degrees to 24 degrees. So now I'm gonna go back to my diagram here and I'm gonna analyze that dehumidification section first. Now I already got the, I've already got the governing equations for, for a dehumidification process. I've already got those for my dehumidification video. So if you need help with that, go ahead and go refer back to that. But this is my Q dot that I get. Um, and the mass flow rate of the air, I could put that in terms of V dot of the air at state one divided by the specific volume of the dry air at state one. And by Dalton's model, I can say that the volumetric flow rate of the dry air and the mixture are exactly the same. And now I'm ready to just pull off all the properties that I can off of that psychrometric chart. The only one I won't be able to pull off is that H sub F at TW, that very last term. And I'm gonna pull that off of my saturated water tables. So if I go back to my psychrometric chart here, I can pull off all the values that I need. And if you need to, you can pause the video and, and verify where those values came from. All right, so if I plug everything in and I look up my H sub F value, I get a negative 34.512. And that makes sense 
I would expect that Q dot value to be negative because I'm removing heat from the moist air. So um, my control volume is just encompassing the moist air. It's not encompassing, I've drawn a coil here, so it's not encompassing the coil. So heat is allowed to leave the moist air and go into that coil. Now I'm gonna look at the, the heating section or the simple heating section. So if I apply my first law and my conservation of mass, I get this equation right here. So you'll notice that I've got things in terms of three and two, so states three and two. Um, and I know m dot a, I've already calculated that because m dot a is the same for the whole, you know, from state one to state two to state three. It just moves all the way through and there's no other exiting pathway for the dry air. Um, unlike the water where you've got some of it going out as condensate um, in the first section. So my Q dot two, the only thing that I really need to get is the specific enthalpy of my moist air at state three, which is 51. And if I plug, oops, if I plug everything in, there we go. If, my, if I plug everything in, I get 14.05 kilojoules per second. That makes sense that it's a positive number because I'm heating things up, I'm adding heat to, them, to that moist air. All right, well, I hope that was helpful. Thank you for watching.